Okay, and to summarize um, those posts, and I don't really want to delve into this being a business social media, but with the damage and um, slander, I guess you're going to call it, defamation that has gone on in the last seven years, I'm hoping that somebody's going to help me with a solicitor because the only thing I really do need help with is legal representation. That's all. Um, now, I'm going to make this very clear. Uh, my mother's side was part to blame with all this that went on. In actual fact, if I had a decent family on both sides of the family, they would have known what I'd already studied. They would have known what I worked at. I mean, just my family would have known that I had worked for Steve Hatch and Dimitri from 2009 until 2012. So it was only a, a design consultant basis um, doing work for him, you know, freelancing work there. Uh, but I was still doing it. Look, some weeks I was there with him for, you know, well, I was there by myself um, doing the work. Um, some of it was just tedious, but some of it was actually still based on my own design. So I got to actually, um, you know, showcase what I could do sort of ish on a very small scale um, with what I had just studied. And, and that's what's really annoyed me the last seven years. I had already been pushing myself. Sorry, my dog's behind me, so I'm trying not to lean, lean back onto him, which is why I'm fidgeting. Um, so I um, had already worked and studied and where I was trying to push myself and then suddenly that had all been stopped due to myself being lied about. Look, one of the biggest issues is people affiliated with my mother's niece, Christy Childs. Now, I don't really have much, anyone who knows me, I don't have a good word to say about my mother's side of the family. I always say that the decent ones of that family died with my grandparents, Reg and Lola. I don't really give a shit about their daughters. And I know this is my, um, you know, business uh, account, and I should be saying as little as possible. But when it comes to my reputation, I've had it destroyed because people just didn't take me as me. They had to look at family or what other people were saying or something to do with my mother's second husband which she separated with in 94 i really don't care none of this is anything to do with me at all or what i've studied or what i've worked at or where i've lived my family should not be impacting at all and definitely not my mother's sisters and their children um if look if no if there's a family member out there that doesn't know what i've studied then they don't know me like you can't say that I'm closer. They can't say, oh, God, how hard Justin worked when he was doing that work for Steve. Or better yet, how hard Justin worked at the casino, okay, when I was a VIP host doing 10-hour shifts a day, then doing side jobs. When Okay, fair enough, I was in my 20s, but I still did labouring as one side job, okay? Um, that was for Jeff, oh, I can't think of a tough and glass company guy. I might even put that up there. Um, he will come to me. He um, ran his business out of Hunter's Hill. Um, out of his uh, parents' house, and um, uh, I'll think, uh, you know, I'll put it up there. As soon as I find it, it will come to me, his last name. Um, but, you know, that was my second side job, and then maintenance as well. And I still would have fine time to, to do art and design. So I'm doing 10 hours a day at Star Casino, working side jobs doing maintenance, okay, and a tough and glass company, so really pushing my body, which I feel it now, really pushing my body to the limits. Then I'm still working on my studies, you know, still doing stuff at home. Back then I was mainly just working on artwork, okay? It wasn't until after I was mugged, I was mugged and robbed for my jewelry and everything, that I, in my work bag on the way home from work, November 30th, 2007. It was a really misfortunate, and here's where the trouble started. So I went for a horrible misfortunate event. November 30th, 2007, meters from my front door. I wouldn't normally be walking home. I would have actually been driving my car, um, but I happened to just caught the tram from Star Casino to Central, got out of Central, um, exited up Elizabeth Street, walked up Cleveland Street, um, I made it to my front door and I got attacked. So, and, and it was an attack for my jewelry. And I used to be, well, I was always lit up like a Christmas tree, basically. Uh, diamonds, gold, you can see that through photos of me. Back in those days, it was, yeah, ghetto gold to the max. Always had a lot of expensive jewelry, a lot of expensive clothing, and I was a target. I wasn't the only person because apparently the detective Chopper said to me that um, there was a few muggings before me on Devonshire Street. They cut across, saw you, mugged you. That's what happened. Uh, unfortunately, that was a Glasgow Karma Scale 13, and I couldn't get my job back at Star Casino after that. 
Um, there's a lot more that I can explain, which I would love to explain to a barrister because this needs to be resolved. It's caused me too much damage. So then I was like, oh, okay, well, what am I going to do now? Oh, well, why not just focus back onto what I initially studied after high school, art and design, because that was my studies. I left high school, went to TAFE College, studied art and design. So I did. So why didn't anyone ask me? Because that's what I was doing. So there's a lot of lies that started. I'm going to say this as well. And I'm really upset with Giovanni Consalvo. I met him in August 2008. And I could really belittle him here and say some home truths. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to say he knows the truth. This matter should be dealt with legally. I was never home. I was always, always off busy working and studying. Um, what he said to people about me wasn't true. Um, and it was very damaging. Um, it caused me a lot of damage in the last seven years as well, and he refused to correct it because he benefited and gained from those lives, um, which is really, it, it, it feels extremely frustrating and trapped in a country a system where there is no decent law. You know, there is no decent legal representation in Australia. Here's me sitting back going, hang on, not, that's not true. None of that's true. I mean, I, I had an investment property. I sold my investment property in late 2008. Most of that money went into the bank, uh, you know, savings. I, this is the, Here's the truth. I'm telling you myself the truth. But you're judging a book by its cover, and that cover is not correct. What you have assumed isn't true, and you've attacked my life for seven years. A good example about Bolivian Giovanni, when I met him, he was a guy that was struggling in debt. He was just one of those gay guys that had always been in the gay scene. Um, fine, that's his life choice. Fine, but he had no money, no assets, no belongings, nothing. As a 41-year-old man, he had nothing, struggling in debt with, with not, without anything. He, he wasn't even living by himself. He was living in a share house with these two other people. He couldn't afford anything. So then he moved into my place where I was living by myself independently, and he moved in in 2009. Now, I owned my car outright, my assets, my belongings. I had no debts, and I just paid off my mortgage because of my investment property. I didn't even have a credit card debt. I had uh, well over 100000 in the bank as a 29-year-old. Okay? So, again, the lies of the last seven years don't match the facts. You can watch, there's a DVD where I used my place at the time as a set for a film in 2007 called K-E-L-Y. It's actually Yelk, spelt backwards, if anyone's interested. So, the Kelly is sort of spoken to us about, uh, is like saying, using the name as, um, so for two characters in the film, which end up finding out to be one. So Kelly being a, a crime boss name and Yelk being the name that um, this character is called by and you soon find out that Yelk is Kelly backwards. Okay, anyway, in that film, you'll see my expensive furniture, my expensive clothing, my assets, my belongings and so forth back in 2007 when that film was made. So again, that's why I said that these lies about me in the last seven years don't match the facts. And I want this resolved legally because I'm the only person that has paid the damage to constantly be lied about over a period of time and have people basically benefit and gain from that. I had a misfortune event, yes, but I didn't dwell on it. I had a misfortune event. It happened. That was it. I didn't dwell on it. The lies don't match the facts. You know, I bring up the misfortune event so people understand, well, what happened here? Well, I didn't just leave my job and I wasn't fired or anything like that. I had a misfortune event that prevented me at the time going back. Well, my employer said I couldn't go back to my job because of the bad mugging at the time. That's what happened. So I only bring it up just to, to clarify something there. Um, you know, it, it's, it's wrong to put me through the last seven years. It's wrong to keep going with the wrong information and attack my life at my cost and expense. Um, I'm, not, yeah, I, I'm not the person that's going to back down from this now. I'm not after seven years. It's um, the point of, um, I guess it could have easily been resolved in 2016 when I tried to get it resolved or at least in 2017. Um, or even in 2018, um, except it just kept continuing and it, then it continued into the US where I had the uh, permanent resident status since 2014 and then it was like, okay, enough now. Uh, this has gone too far. It's costing me too much in damages, in money, in assets, in belongings, in savings. This is now too far. These people need to be prosecuted. The law says their behavior is illegal. Then the law needs to actually press criminal charges towards them. And that's what needs to happen. 
So I did the studies. I'm not going to sit back and see people like Belinda Jeffries or Christy Childs. Like there all seems to be some type of same characters or people um, or anybody else for that matter. Stephanie Tassalis or anybody sit back and deny me the truth of what I've done in my life. Um, and I'm not going to sit back and let anyone keep interfering in my life because they've received information that never came from me. And that's the thing. In the last seven years, none of the information came from me. I mean, it got as far as to the stage that a organization called the Crisis Group, uh, Acute Care Center of St. Vincent's Hospital, I actually got harassed by them over a Facebook post. So Daniel Rackley, which is Mark Rackley's son, Faith Rackley's brother, he had a long list of suicide and depressive posts on his Facebook regarding about not being able to see his children, um, his you know, relationship problems. Oh, we just went on. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. So this guy is actually my mother's second husband's son. Uh, we're the same age, you know, um, both born the same year. In actual fact, there's myself born 79. Uh, my mum's um, nephew, Shane Charles, born in 79. He's a dickhead as well. I'm going to put this, yeah, I don't care. Uh, I just don't care anymore. He's an absolute idiot. And so is Daniel Rackley. Um, so... I actually did have an organization um, for, come up to me and they start talking to me about, and this is what I, I find absolutely hilarious, they're talking to me about football. How do you gamble on football? And I haven't got a freaking clue. I've never been involved in football in my life, uh, unless you're talking about football as in soccer. And then they run the assumption that I used to go for um, the Dragons football team. I was like, wait a minute. Mark Rackley went for the Dragons. I'm thinking, these guys think I'm Daniel Rackley. Um, anyway, so I actually looked up, um, and on, fair enough, on, on Daniel Rackley's Facebook post, there was a post of him looking drugged out of his head, which is exactly like his father, um, betting on the Dragons football team. And I was like, these people are stupid. That's Daniel Rackley. I mean, I know I've put on weight in the last, uh, you know, six years. I used to always be very thin, but you can't say, I mean, just because I've got fat now, that I'm looking at that photo going, okay, Daniel Rackley's always been fat. He's a bit of a you know, reddish brown ringer like his dad. Um, how are you confusing me as him? But it did. It actually did. And I kept a copy of those Facebook posts. Um, and the other situation happened with a Michael Long and a Deb Mears in 2017, um, which I want to see this matter. That's why I want this matter to be brought legally. They said some horrible things. And it's like, oh, wow, that, that actually, straight away when they're talking, they, their comments related to Mark Rackley, which is this disgusting, creepy nurse guy that my mother was briefly married to. Not, I don't really know the guy. Um, wouldn't want to know the Rackleys. They're disgusting people. Um, and um, I'm like, they thought that was my father. I'm like, yeah, my father's Mark Fleming. The Flemings don't participate in that type of behavior. My dad's a hardworking builder. In actual fact, the last job that my dad had was building the inside of Westwood shopping complexes. There's a stru uh, structure in Haymarket in Sydney that my dad built. Uh, I remember when my dad was building the inside of, it was an overseer and could even change plans on the construction of Westfield's Tugra. Um, so dad's a really good builder, very hardworking man. Um, you are talking about somebody else and you've confused me in this mess that you're just not backing off from. And these people didn't back off. Uh, they hadn't backed off for seven years, and I've worn the damage from it. And what's even worse is these, and I have to say, a-holes, because there's no other way to describe these people, they would be the type of character to sit back and go, oh, well, we're not paying for the damage that we've caused, but you are going to. You, you, Of course you are, because I didn't cause it myself. And the legal system says you actually are liable for the damage. The law says you cause that damage, you interfere in someone's life, you are liable. And not to mention again, it is criminal. I'm talking about criminal behavior towards me. It's unwanted. I'm talking about being lied about. And if I have to put this post up on my business account and say, okay, you look, I don't care. This is meant to be my business account, but I want this to be known. Um, with Giovanni winching all the time, the guy was broke. The guy, when I met him, I wish, look, if I could go back to August 2008 and never met this bastard, I would go back to August 2008 and never met him because it was just stupid. I, I wasn't interested in a relationship with him because he wasn't relationship type. He was uh, some gay guy that was 
involved in all this sort of behaviour that these type of people behave, behave in, the type of with himself. I mean, um, I don't think he's ever been sober, I'm going to put it, since I met the guy because of the type of behaviour that he affiliates in um, requires him to not be sober, which is why he's always broke, which is why he was lying about me for years to his employer, which is why the effects had just happened in the way they did. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Um, this isn't true. No, this is true. Where'd you get the information from? And it certainly didn't come from me. So I look, I'm not going to, I'm trying really hard to not put the emotion in this, but I really do need a barrister. I mean, as for my dog, so someone actually brought up the reason why my dog was trained as a service dog and they want to know all this information. I'm going to be blunt and say, you don't legally have a right to know. He was licensed, he is licensed, and he was licensed in the US. Legally, you don't have a right to interfere, and you don't have a right to know. That's still breaking the law. I want this matter resolved. Um, it's taken seven years of my life, and it's pushed me backwards. Basically, I could say I'm back to where I was in 1996, and I'm not wearing the damage for it. No friend or family member is, is going to get away unscathed either this so um near is either uh all right um at that so i'll put this up i'm not gonna keep these posts up long i just want to explain a couple of things hopefully i can get attention for a legal advice with that um because that's what i'm after i really need i really need it to go legally it should have been taken legally six years ago um you know and um so hopefully Someone's got some advice. Someone may have, a, you know, a relative even. It's like, oh, hang on, I, I know a barrister. Um, you know, they could try and help, you know, get this mess resolved so at least you can live your life freely with what you've worked towards and studied. Like, at least we can help you get your life back to where it was. Um, it may mo there may not be any avenue to get reimbursed for the damages, but at least we can put a stop to the wrong information and that would then free up other avenues. You know, that would be perfect freeing up other avenues by correcting the lies that have gone on for years.